Hi, it's Emily from Bite Size Vegan, and welcome to another Vegan Nugget. Today, I'm honored to be joined by my friend and mentor, Gary Rofsky, who has graciously agreed to be here and answer questions that you, the Bite Size Vegan audience, have sent to me. I'm going to be releasing this interview in a series of videos, so be sure to stay tuned to the channel. Gary, I just wanted to thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to be here and answer some of these questions. Anything for you, Emily. Thank you. So to start off, um, one of the questions that I got a lot from people, and I think for someone who's just had their eyes kind of opened and is, is considering going vegan or has gone vegan, or perhaps they're you know a vegan who just watched your speech and, and realized that they want to do more, and they've come to this point of kind of like, what can I do? What action can I take? What would you say to someone who wants to get started um, with vegan animal activism? It's got to be education-based activism, whatever you're doing. This is not my realm. This is not my bailiwick. I'm not great at advising people how to be an activist. But I do know that you have to teach people. You have to edify. You have to preach. So somehow, maybe set up classroom lectures like I'm doing in high schools and colleges, elementary schools, middle schools. Set it up at a church, at a synagogue, at a mosque, at the YMCA. Leaflet. Do something like that. What I don't recommend anymore... It's probably the things that most people like to do, which is protesting. I just think protesting has lost its luster over the years. Civil disobedience. I don't think you can win in a courtroom, but you win in a classroom every single day. Uh, direct action is always valuable, too. If you want to liberate animals, uh, that would be an awesome thing to do. Uh, but focus on education and make that your goal and things will fall into place and don't beat yourself up too much when you find somebody that isn't paying attention and isn't listening move on and find somebody who does want to listen they're out there people are thirsting for knowledge it is your goal as an activist to find those people who are thirsting for knowledge teach them convert them and keep on doing it some people argue that being vegan alone is not enough. I mean, what are your thoughts on that? Do you think like being vegan and, and adopting a vegan diet, do you think that alone can make a, an impact? I think it's the only thing on this planet that can actually make a difference. But is it enough from the victim's point of view? Of course not. Billions of animals are being tortured and killed. But I'm really tired of people turning on the news and getting involved in all the world issues, the Darfur genocide, uh, women in Afghanistan still don't have equal rights, homosexuals in Uganda are being killed. I understand this is a major injustice, but you can't do anything about it. So stop talking about world issues that you have no control over. And here's something you could stand up three times, four times, five times a day and say, I'm opposed to discrimination. I'm opposed to injustice. And that's why I'm eating vegan meals. This is something you can actually do. But from there, yeah, sure, get active. Get more active. Teach people. Talk to people. Again, back to the education. Something that I, I, I've heard from a lot of people and that I know I personally can struggle with as a vegan activist is when you're faced with all of the suffering in the world and, you know, all of the people who, who don't seem to care, how do you keep going and, and, you know, keep your head up and not get lost in just the, you know, the overwhelming suffering that's going on? It's tough. I'm forever frustrated, forever stressed, forever saddened. I was telling you before, I died inside a long time ago. But I'm going through the motions for the animals. Because whatever I'm going through, whatever you as an activist are going through, is nothing compared to what the animals are going through in the slaughterhouse, in the vivisection lab, at the circus, at the zoo, at the rodeo. That stuff is purely evil. You have to keep on going for them. I don't know how else to say it. I don't have a magical formula, a magical solution uh, to make you not become frustrated, not become stressed out. It goes with the territory. Enlightenment is bittersweet. I've told this to a lot of people. It is bittersweet. It's wonderful to know the truth, to see the truth, to live the truth. But it's maddening to see how selfish and evil our species can be. You have to keep on going for the animals. That's the only thing. Just think about them and keep on going for them. Gary, I just want to thank you so much for, for giving us your time. And I've been asked on behalf of, of so many of my viewers to just thank you for, for everything that you do. So thank you so much. Thank you. 
keep on. Everybody, pass your stuff around. It's tight stuff. Honestly, bitesizevegan.com. Share it. Stay tuned to the Bite Size Vegan channel for more installations of Gary's interview. I'll also be posting bonus footage of questions that don't make it to the channel into the VIB section of bitesizevegan.com, which you can access for free by signing up for the Nugget newsletter. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and be sure to subscribe so that you never miss a nugget. Now go live vegan, and I'll see you soon.